Hi Krishna, welcome back. Welcome to this special session. And uh, very, very happy uh, to know that you have completed your PFMP uh, with the flying colors. Uh, I'm very happy to see that you completed within just over two months. Uh, and it, it, it is very exciting to see that how you started and how you completed your journey, even though they, they took extra time during the application, but still the application was completed reasonably you know, good time. And then uh, you did your exam and you passed the exam with flying colors. So congratulations for your extraordinary achievement. Thank you very much, Dharam. Thank you. And uh, first of all, uh, today is very auspicious day. In fact, yesterday it was a very auspicious day and uh, uh, where we celebrate uh, Guru. So happy Guru Purnima to you. And uh, right. thanks for being my mentor and guiding me in my entire journey. And uh, yeah, thank you. So here I'm going to talk about my lessons learned, which probably will help uh, some of the yeah. aspirants. Thank you, yeah, for, for honoring me. And I know it's a very special day. So I do remember my, my mentors and my teachers. And the good thing is, I'm actually starting one virtual yoga session from tonight, my tonight, and it's gonna be early morning for you uh, and uh, India. So I'm hoping to see around 40, 50 people in the, in the first uh, session. It's a free session. Anybody can join from anywhere. So sooner and, you know, kind of a, today is more like a kickoff session. So I've not publicized too much, but uh, let's see how, how I can handle the 40, 50 people in the class. And then I will add more and more. It's, it's becoming easier for me to handle the work with people. Then I will make it more available. So it's a very special day for me as well. Congratulations on the new yeah. chapter. So uh, coming back to your PFMP, I know it's, uh, many people have some kind of fear factor and uh, they hesitate, they hesitate to start. The whole process is, uh, you know, uh, they see this very complicated, uh, too much information required and too many steps are there. Uh, I think it's a good idea if you can, you can, you, I know you have prepared a presentation, uh, but you know, you, you go through that and we like to see, like to make this journey as easy as possible to most of the people watching this video. Definitely, yes. Um, let me take uh, my journey, you know, uh, in, a, <clears throat> in a small step way. So first of all, I would like to share my knowledge because um, like, like what Dalai Lama says, share your knowledge, it's the a way to achieve mortality. So I want to be immortal by sharing my knowledge. Exactly. And it's a good thing. Yeah. So um, I structured this entire presentation. Uh, of course, this is a, not a presentation kind of thing. This is mostly, mostly it is going to be discussion kind of a thing. But uh, just like noted, noted on the point so that I'm not missing out the things which I wanted to share on the community. So uh, I would like to first start with my story, how I started my journey on PFMP and uh, what was my exam preparation what are the things that i used and what are the tools and techniques that i used which will uh, uh, which helped me so probably the same things can help all the others also and finally i'll talk more about the exam you know how the exam pattern is and what kind of questions that one can expect and how do we address those kind of things so, so just yeah yeah uh, great thank you for putting this slide together I just like to warn people when they were, whenever they are watching or listening or reading somebody's stories or lesson, uh, don't just accept as it is because everybody has gone through differently. Their mindset is different. Their environment is different. Uh, some people can be very negative about something, you know, negative there, but some positive things are also there. So try to pick some nuggets from wherever you can find. Um, don't just say because I uh, Krishna's journey was this, I will have my exact thing. You will learn a few things, take some points from here and use those points in your journey. That will be a better way of accepting or watching these kind of uh, lessons. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. In fact, um, uh, just to add a note onto that, uh, I have gone through some of your previous uh, you know, discussions with your uh, you know, people who whom you mentored and uh, who passed their uh, certification. And those things really helped me in shaping my yeah. journey. 
So just to talk about my story very briefly, you know, I got uh, 26 plus years of experience uh, across industries and geographies, and of which is 17 plus years into project management, predominantly on the ERP space, and uh, got my PhD certification on in 2016, and uh, met Dharam on 26th April of this kind of just three months back. Right, just right. three months ago. <laughs> yeah, three months ago, right. <laughs> And uh, started my PFMB journey on May 4th by submitting an application and passed on uh, 11th July with about our so, so, so let, let's, let's talk about 26th of April. When we met, I don't think you were very sure that you wanted to go all the way and you were, you know, I think you still did double mind. Tell me more about that. What was happening in your mind? Sure, sure. So, like you see, uh, like you saw in my journey, I am only a PMP certified person, and uh, PFMP usually the kind of doubt that anybody gets is that um, oh, should I be completing PGMP also to, be, to become a PFMP, right? That's where uh, Dharam kind of clarified saying that uh, it's not required, uh, it's about the experience that uh, the you know, uh, previous experience that you have in managing the portfolios that's what matters. Not that uh, you should be having a PGMP as a prerequisite, or in fact, PMP also is not a prerequisite. Somebody who's having a much more experience in portfolio management, you know, in a true real uh, professional experience, uh, they can directly go for PFMP also. So that's where Dharam clarified those doubts. And, um, you know, he kind of um, assured me, saying that uh, after listening to my experiences and store uh, in my professional uh, career, so he kind of advised, yes, uh, I fit for this certification and I should be going for this certification. And um, yeah, that's how I started. So the, the important for the people watching uh, is you, to, you need to analyze what is the current state of your career? Yeah. What will benefit you more? Just because everybody else is doing certain certification, you follow the, you know, uh, that path. Whether PMP go to help you, PGP go to help you, PSMP go to help you, depends on number of factors, of course, your experience, you know, whether you are coming from project experience or program experience, portfolio experience, or uh, you know, how many years experience you have. And uh, third, or third thing is, how is going to help me to improve my career chances, improve your, you know, within the organization or outside the organization. Will this add more value? To my aspiration to become senior manager, to become you know CEO, VP, you know whatever aspiration you have, so you need to see which certificate and how it is going to add more value to my current and future aspirations. And once you get that, then you may have a roadmap. Okay, you know what I have to achieve PFMP. Why not let me get some basic information learning from PMP? And if you feel like, why not? You know, I have some program experience, maybe I can also get my PhDMP. So uh, I think you know, somebody asked, you, asked me, or maybe you asked me, Krishna, how many PGMP, PFMP, and PMPs are there? I, I don't think you didn't ask because you don't have PGMP. So, so it is around 250 or 300 people who have only, who have three, all three certificates. And with PFMP and PMP, probably around 500, because not many people have done even PMP to get to the PFM, but it's up to you. And if you're in doubt, so I mean, I'm here to clarify your doubt. You can book a time with me, free to free meeting. I'm I'm free. I'm freely available. Yeah. And sorry. To yeah. You. No, no, nothing. Like that. You know, please. Um, you know, who are you listening? Please take uh, advice from uh, Aaron. He's really helpful. And he'll clarify all your doubts, and he's very patient enough to clarify all your doubts, which is rare, you know, to see uh, from people who are at that point kind of patient. So, Aram has got a lot of experience, not many certifications uh, to his credit, which shows that uh, the kind of depth of knowledge that he's having, the depth of experience that he's having in you know, coaching, mentoring, you know, many thousands of uh, applicants. So, please use his experience and you know, advice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, just to talk more, little bit more on that, uh, the the one thing what you told on that day is also about matters. So where you mentioned the uh, PMPs, there are millions of PMPs, whereas PFMPs are only thousands. You know, 
that really kind of triggered me and uh, kind of made uh, wanted me to become a PFMP as quickly as possible. In fact, as I asked the Dharam also, can I appear for the exam by June? So I was <laughs> eager to start my uh, coaching session with him because um, he was having uh, uh, kind of batches. So the batch started from May 6th onwards. But because I met him on 26th itself, I said, uh, why can't we start immediately? But of course, the batch didn't start, but he helped me in uh, you know, writing down my application. So preparation steps have happened. So, yeah. So one thing I noticed that your result, having about target, almost same place I was, my, my result are, uh, you know, kind of, is it yours or mine? <laughs> <laughs> so we, I think you have four about target or five about target. Yeah, four about target and one target. And one one target is that's governance. Okay, I had communication with target, you had governance, so it's yeah. so it's not exact match, but yes, very close. <laughs> In fact, that, that was a surprise, you know. Um, that I will talk uh, when we're talking about the examination analysis. I didn't expect governance to become in the uh, kind of target because uh, probably I, I missed out so many things or questions itself were not so so tuned towards governance kind of thing. so maybe yeah. we'll talk about it later <laughs> yeah okay so I'll talk about uh, a little bit about my exam preparation and uh, how I plan <clears throat> so I like like uh, Dharam already mentioned I completed this entire journey in uh, 70 days uh, submitted my application on 4th of May and uh, I got a response uh, on 18th May saying that they need some kind of clarifications on my application. And um, that's where again I approached Dharam, and uh, he was kind enough to review my application and he pointed it out the places where I need to improvise on my application. And it was kind of two, three times back and forth um, where uh, Dharam helped me to you know, kind of uh, set my application properly. And again, I submitted it on 4th June. And uh, I got uh, the acceptance on 13th June and got certified on 11th uh, July. So, exactly a month preparation that's uh, for me uh, for the actual preparation. Uh, of course, the coaching sessions were happening, uh, but uh, the actual you know, exam preparation uh, started from 13th onwards uh, to 11th July. So, then I would like to add anything on the application process. Yeah, look, application is the most important part of this uh, process, the FMP process, even PGMP. Uh, one is because you're showing your, you know, telling me my, these are my basic info information, which is everybody need to know. Like they need to know. Second, about the portfolio description. And, and the third part is the five questions. These questions are your experience. You're showing your experience as a portfolio manager. So the, the first part where you describe your portfolio, has to be in a particular structure and you need to talk about your organization you need to talk about uh, the vision mission strategies of your organization then you talk about your uh, portfolio how portfolio was important how portfolio is connected with the strategy objective and you know the structure of the portfolio talk about uh, the organization structure of the portfolio some key projects programs that's how you write your portfolio experience and uh, then five questions are really important. The one you have to repeat uh, because of minor changes. Uh, these are the five questions reviewed during the panel review. So after you pass, after you made the payment, uh, then you get into the panel review. Actually, let me warn you here, uh, people watching this video, uh, the email come out from PMI after the first review is very misleading. That tells you that hey, you have now 365 days uh, to book your exam and so and so. And in the bottom, you see now you can pay the fees. So many people get excited. Hey, I, I pass. I'm ready to take the exam without looking the bottom line, uh, the, the, the line under that. So make sure you read the email very carefully. And uh, that's, that's asking you to pay the fees. Once you pay the fees, you are entering the panel review. And once you pass the panel review, then only you can book the exam. And second right. thing I like to advise people, uh, don't just rely on the emails coming out from PMI. Because, you know, you know, either the email can go into the spam folder or uh, you never get an email for any reason. 
always keep an eye on the PMI portal. Log in every morning. That's what is the current status. Have you moved to the panel review? Have you completed the panel review? Because if you keep waiting for the email, sometimes people realize that they only passed its uh, panel review 15 days ago. Now, anyway, so that's a couple of advice. Right. So I, I strongly support what um, Dharam has mentioned. That um, in fact, uh, I haven't received the email, uh, but we, we, the status was updated on the portal. So after checking in the portal, after a day or two, I received the email of the confirmation. So it's better that you always look into the portal to get the latest updates. That's yeah. one thing. Second thing I would like to advise here is that um, why I got the review, you know, probably that most of the people also be getting. Uh, if you are seeing, I have experience in managing programs also. Okay, so usually the way we write uh, the application, sometimes we tend to go towards more details about how we kind of manage the program than looking at highlighting our portfolio experience. That's where uh, I strongly advise the people to really differentiate uh, your experience, portfolio experience versus the program experience, and concentrate more on highlighting your portfolio experiences. Perfect. Okay, so then, uh, like, uh, I have one week, one month time to complete my examination, so four, four weeks. So what my study plan was uh, to have the complete SPMP uh, on weekdays, studying the complete chapters and attending the practice tests uh, on weekends. So kind of so, for four weeks, yeah. So let me advise one uh, one important thing. SPM3 is standard for portfolio management, third edition. So why I want to talk about this? Because uh, there are fourth edition available on the on the PMI site. So I don't know if they have repl uh, replaced by third edition or not, but they themselves not sure sometimes. So you instead of going for fourth edition, the exam is still based on third edition. If you don't see that book or the link to download from PMI website, doesn't mean that it's not uh, it's not available. You know, uh, the exam is still third edition. There's no announcement with fourth edition. So please, very very careful. If you're in doubt, ask me. Uh, I have because I'm part, I'm ATP. I know I, I get to know a little more information than the rest of the world before you know, other uh, you know ATP can get get to know more. So. At this stage, you know, if we are in uh, you know, July 2021, uh, at the moment it's third edition, but yes, always verify with, with on the PMI website. You might, if you're in doubt, ask me. Okay. So I had uh, four weeks, so four uh, tests, and uh, two from uh, Danger Levy, as advised by Dharam, and one from uh, Dharam's. Uh, um, Knowledge Bank and uh, some of the remaining things are online from PM Advisory kind of thing. And um, they, uh, they, one more important thing, what I would I have done, which I would advise others also to do the flashcards. You know, use the power of the flashcards. Try to write down um, the entire things into the flashcards. In fact, I kind of wrote down entire SPM three into flashcards. Uh, then. Make sure that you are because the same document, for example, portfolio management plan gets used across multiple process, but uh, the sections of the plan which will be used in risk will be different from which will be used in communication management. So that's where you need to be very confident about what where this particular section is being used. And uh, uh, this I kind of noted down uh, for each and every uh, document. And then I developed my own techniques to remember uh, the input outputs and do so. Okay, which I'm going to talk in the next slides. Uh, then um, we we can expect some of the PMBOK uh, PMP kind of uh, questions also. So, so instead of going through the entire book, I relied on uh, some of the videos on PMBOK and also on the uh, CPI and SPI and all these tools and formulate for that. And then um, yeah, I created my own uh, topic wise notes for final review when you know, so that uh, at the last week. I just have to go through the, the notes. So in the entire thing, or if you can see, I kind of finished the SPM3 probably four times, you know, in all these four weeks. So that really has helped me. And uh, when you are actually going to the third and fourth time of the review, that's where you actually try to 
connect the entire process into things. I mean, it helped. It, it, it happened to me. For some some of the folks, it would be you know on first attempts, it's all they can do it. I'm not saying you should go for third or fourth only. I'm telling for myself. So that's when I realized, uh, you know, yes, the thing what he's talking in chapter number two, how it is going to be utilized or used in chapter number five or six or kind of thing, right? So that helps you to connect the entire dots, and then um, you will be completely wired to see okay entire thing from the top uh, view. So it helps when you are addressing the uh, questions when you are attending the in, in the test. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so. Then uh, the never ending debate on ginger continues. So, the ginger lemon book uh, is um, kind of advised by Dharam. And um, after finishing my first um, uh, test, first uh, preparation of the first completion of the entire uh, SPM3, I attempted ginger lemon, but I could got only 40% of it. Okay? And uh, of course, as usual, we love to go and see the, what's the reason why, why I'm why I went and kind of. You Feel like you know this cannot be. You know how can it be? You know all kind of questions will come because the question is talking something. The answer you choose, you feel that that's right. But where uh, Ginger says no, this is not right because of this reason. Because something is written in the SPM. Okay, so I am also like uh, a frustrated like many uh, of Ginger Levin's practice tests, and I stopped after you know two weeks of my preparation attempting those things. Of course, I did uh, two practice tests. And of course, after the second one, I approached Dharam and uh, he kind of advised me, so which he will talk about himself now. And uh, I recommend certainly no, even to attempt chapter wise questions towards the fag end of your preparation, unless you are okay to be surprised. Okay, this is my genuine advice. So, unless you are okay to be surprised, don't even look into that one. So, maybe you'd like to add something over here. Yeah, I like I like the way you present it. You're saying debate um, on ginger's question. Okay, so let me let me start uh, by giving some background around ginger. Ginger was a very prominent person in project management program in Portland, Maine. Right? She spent probably fifty years of her life in doing you know lots of work in project program in Portland, Maine. Um, I met her. Actually, we invited her to Sydney for a PMPGB class an OPM3 class, and uh, that was my first interaction with her. And uh, she encouraged, you know, in the class. Uh, she was very, very fragile at the time as well. It's very, I, I, our age was showing up at the time. Yeah, I'm talking 2009. And, uh, but she was always encouraging everybody, you know, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to write books, you, you know. I mean, what I am now is kind of her initiation. She pushed me. Hey, whoever do the we passing the exam, PGP exam from this group, uh, we'll be able to run classes using my material. So that was kind of my motivation. So, so that's where you know I have some special respect for her. And uh, then when I, I met with her in Florida, uh, so but unfortunately she's not with us anymore. Uh, but the work she has done is great. Uh, it's, my recommendation about Ginger book is not because she was my mentor. Is because the kind of work she's done. And you will see, you know, question banks are there available for PGMP and PFMP, all kind of available. But no one has taken an, enough courage to go into detail. How can I make this question more relevant? Yes, once the well, first time when you start using them, uh, you get frustrated. And and I saw, you know, you know, when we say that I'm unscoring this. I tell you my story, you know, when I I was preparing in 2018. My exam was 24th of October, uh, 2018. And uh, here I was around 19th or 20th, I think 20th of uh, 21st. I said, let me test out. I didn't have enough time to, I, I didn't allow myself to go through you know, the whole process of learning with somebody mentor. I was preparing myself. I didn't have time to uh, go through a lot of things, which I encouraged. Uh, I had only one month to prepare with the three running training in Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane, uh, flying in. Flying. Anyway, so that's a different story. So now, the three days to go for an exam, and uh, I picked the question bank, the next question bank, and uh, I thought I'm ready. But that surprised me. Even you said 40%, that's a good score. Very good score. I scored 
in, in governance chapter. You know what? Uh, that was very surprising to me. Um, so I use this book as a, you know, uh, to, to check the reality. You might be feeling that you are very prepared and you're going to make it happen. I mean, you may be. But when you start doing some tough question, you say, hey, well, something is still missing. Then you go to the you know, explanation. Then you look at the book. Yes, your viewpoint, what's her point is going to be different. And, you know, she is going to pick the very minute detail of the chapter, which you said, you know, you when you finish reading, doing the question, your book was, the entire book was yellow. Because now she's pointing to the very, very small detail in the in the book and that's what i want once you get 40 percent 30 percent even 15 percent the idea is to not to throw the book away okay how can i recover from this and recovery is only way only way to recover is to do another reading of the book and this time in more detail and once you got the you know, detailed learning and analytics and how to handle the lengthy and complex question Exam will be walking the park. And you, you come back and the exam was easy, extremely easy. Nowhere compared to genius exam. And it's easy because you are prepared, not prepared, you're over prepared. So I like to see my students go through the, you know, the journey and be over prepared and come back in a smiley face. And, and that's helping me to maintain my 100% inspection for it. Keep doing that for me. <laughs> so, you know, look, uh, I don't want to go through the easy path and you come back with the negative result and hey, but, you know, the questions are difficult. I may sympathize you with this and that, but I want you to make sure you go to the path and you know what exactly to do with particular question. So that's where, uh, you know, Ginger's question, I, for me, there's no debate. I, uh, for my student, I want you to have the book. I know it's $79. And it's very complex question, but I still want, especially when you feel that, yes, I'm very comfortable, then you do the question. And then you start analyzing flow of information, this document to be created, what exactly in the document, who's giving, what input, and you start analyzing very critically. So you're not preparing for the exam, but you're preparing for your doing, your running your portfolio even better. That is where I see the learning is happening. Okay, so I don't think there's a debate here. <laughs> All right, why well, I mentioned it as debate because uh, you know I kind of saw you know the, some some of these PFMP groups saying that um, you know people advise to go for it and some people advise not to go for it. So that's how I try to put it as a debate. Yeah, yeah you yeah. kind of put that debate to rest. And uh, in fact, I also um, you know support what you mentioned. If you see my the next section. It entirely talks about the same thing what you just mentioned, and uh, this this definitely gives you a kind of a feeling. Yes, I need to go back to SPNP where I'm missing, and uh, like I said, uh, it, it can quickly when I started highlighting the points, the entire book became yellow. So kind of you know <laughs> you will see the real importance of each and every sentence that is mentioned in the book. Okay, and uh, you start looking. Oh, okay, how this can be? Why cannot be you know, something like that? So you start analyzing. Yeah, and uh, it, it really helps you to feel that the exam is not that tough. So that tax actually removes a lot of tension from you. You know, the, the, you start looking question after the question, question after the question. You'll see, yes, it is not like ginger. Yes, okay, now I can attempt. Thank God, it's not so tough. You know, mm -hmm. I have confidence to attempt it. Yeah. So and and I didn't finish my full. You know, I scored fifteen percent three days to go to exam. And yeah. I was very, very frustrated, angry myself. And I already told to my Dubai class when I was there in Dubai uh, in, in that month, in the two months, a month before, in September of that, that I'm going to do my exam on this date. And, you know, everybody kind of waiting to see that happening. So I was hey, I got 15% and exam three days from now, what's going to happen? Anyway, so that was my eye-opening moment, eye-opening eye moment. And uh, I start analyzing the things differently, start seeing differently. And uh, I didn't have time to do entire exam uh, fully, but I start checking question by question and start making more and more sense to me. And I was getting more and more confidence. And then an exam, the result was exactly what you had with the above target and four above target and one target. So 
don't get this uh, look i will tell you don't get discouraged because you're getting uh, bad score in the exam uh, only thing is take that uh, as a starting point to recover from that bottom point to getting to the higher point absolutely so let me talk about some of the geeky resources that I used. Um, again, uh, this is my own uh, kind of advice, but uh, people have to look into really whether these things are uh, applicable to their uh, uh, looking at all aspects of security and all these things. So flashcards are used to um, you know, Anki and also Memozine. And uh, there is some tool called uh, Memento, which helps me to kind of sticky notes. So it helps me to put it on uh, top of any window and you can start typing it in. And of course, planner I used. Then I would like to talk about the power of skimming, What, how it helps you. Now, once you have completed all your topics, once you have understood the, you know, completed your the preparation, I recommend you to start doing the skimming by finding the keywords. Like for example, control F and start looking for stakeholder. So the moment you start looking for stakeholder, it throws up so many places in the document and everything. Go through the entire thing, you know. So that's where you are looking from the stakeholder point of view, how the stakeholder is being the role of stakeholder is played around across, you know, on governance, across strategy, across uh, performance, across communication, how this stakeholder thing is getting played. So it gives you much more confidence in addressing the question and it really helped me also because in the exam analysis also I'm going to talk about how how it, uh, this particular stakeholder has me. But I advise you to start looking for other keywords also, performance management or portfolio project management, portfolio management plan or communication, you know, start using these kind of things. And um, once you are completed, so then it will definitely going to boost your understanding and also see where, how it's being used across the entire process. Yeah, good advice. Now, coming to uh, techniques to remember input output, uh, there could be many techniques, and this is one of the techniques what I used. And I kind of gave the numbers to the each and every document. You know, for um, D1, which is the thing first comes out in strategic plan, second, the output is the portfolio, third is chapter, and fourth is roadmap, fifth is management plan. So, like this, each and every thing I have given one number. So, and these are, if you see, these are not the, these are limited only to the ones which are repeating. You know, there are other inputs also which I'm not going to, you know, that you have to think about it. These are the things which are going to be repeating uh, kind of thing across the process. And uh, then gave the numbers to P1, P2, P3, you know, like how they described in the uh, SPM3. So P4 comes to management, uh, strategy management sheet, and P5 is the development management. Then we created a, a matrix kind of a thing. So which comes where? So if you look here, so the kind of uh, patterns that evolve is very interesting. If you see in input uh, matrix, uh, you can notice that portfolio chapter is input only up to strategic management change. So after the fourth process, uh, the chapter is not going to be used anywhere else. So it gives you a kind of uh, clarity, okay, fine. When it comes to, uh, say, for example, in risk management or in communication, is it going to the portfolio or portfolio chapter? You know? So you will be, Rest assured that it's going to be portfolio because charter is not going to be used after strategy. Similarly, you have OPA and uh, organizational processes and EUs. The pattern comes out to be 1, 5, 10, 15 kind of thing, so which is easy to remember. And um, and again, you can notice that the managed study change and the defined portfolio have all the inputs from D1 to D6. This is one interesting thing that comes out. Similarly, when you map it to your output matrix, so you can notice that EEFs are not updated anywhere. So basically you are not updating any and present environment factors, but the, whereas OPA gets updated only in risk management. Okay. So some kind of you know patterns evolve, which will help you to remember the entire thing in a proper way. And once you have, once you start practicing this matrix four times, five times, um, in the 15 minutes initial uh, Time when you are going to get uh, when you are entering the exam when uh, the you know how to appear for the exam or some kind of uh, initial uh, 15 minutes video that runs during that time you can start building these things and uh, which will help you to address most of the questions that are coming. Up. So uh, it's a good way to remember and recall 
but before uh, anybody start coming, let me just uh, because I see Krishna's uh, uh, this flash card of this. Before you come to this point, make sure you understood the material, understood the processes. You visualize everything. You can see the connectivity, logical, uh, logical connection with one process to another. That that is a, is a bet. You know, you have to do this. Then come to this point because this is just supporting the whatever you learn. If you just right. rely on this, you know, it can be a disaster to you because you're thinking, hey, what is this P4, by the way? And if you don't remember the P4, your entire learning of your, your table is gone. And I'll tell you one example, you know, when we are kids, we're told how to remember the rainbow colors. And now we know the rainbow, you know, violet, indigo, whatever. But in those days, you know, they, they say, I mean, teacher told us, you can remember the vib, word vib gear. W is a VIB, something like that. And, uh, and if you remember, V means violet, I is indigo. So that's how we can recall. And in the exam, I forget the word itself. <laughs> Think about, you know, the web theory, I now entire question I got wrong because I forget the word and I don't know what to, what the colors is. You know? So that's very important. Very important. First, you need to build your foundation and then you have acronyms and jingles or you know, tables like this, very useful, very useful, I know that. But before it comes to this point, you have to build your foundation, clarity of thoughts, and logical connection between one process to another, output, input, output, input, that's how you should support. So uh, I strongly support what you mentioned. And uh, this only is a kind of supporting uh, document. It is. It should not be the first document. It can never, it should not. And when yeah, useful if you have 15 minute time, put down within the, that, this kind of thing you can put down in the within few, you know, less than 30 seconds or one minute because you know it very quickly happen. Anyway, so it's good. Good. Uh, yeah. Next, next. Okay, now I talk about the actual examination analysis, or how I, what kind of I don't know, pattern that's going to be. Um, I kind of completed the entire examination in two hours, 50 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, the first two hours, uh, I completed 110 questions, and the remaining 60 in the next 15 minutes. So then I reviewed the first, uh, I kind of reviewed uh, the point, uh, the only the review questions. But then I have got the time, so I started reviewing all questions, almost to uh, could complete uh, the second review of up to 100 questions by the time the time is over. So, but anyway, it, it has got given me kind of ample time. So 180 minutes is sufficient and um, oh, sorry uh, 240 minutes yeah 240 minutes is sufficient and uh, you don't have to really worry about uh, you need that less time so you will have time because the questions like i mentioned the questions are not uh, some of the maximum lengthy questions are going to be five six lines so most of the questions are two lines or three lines so you'll be able to read through that and uh, address the answers yeah um, so the result you got uh, you know, the exam is four hour exam, by the way. Just people yes. recognize that the four hour itself can be challenging to complete because uh, you know, some question uh, now it's looking easy for you because you know, once you actually pass the exam, second is gone through the learning, the, the extensive learning you have to go through, and that's where the exam becomes easy. Uh, but the five, six hour line question or one line question can even one line question can be very tricky if, you, if you're not sure. Uh, if, say, if I ask you what is the key uh, uh, content of the document, if you don't know the, all the content, you cannot find the key. You know, it can be just one line. What is the key content of the document? And it can be just reason. But if you're not going through the extensive learning, you will not be able to pick that. So don't go with the line, number of, uh, number of line in the question. Think about, uh, you know, nitty gritty of each and every word. So yeah, two hour, 50 minutes, around three hours is kind of common uh, uh, pattern now. Most of the people, most of the students are, if they go through this pattern, uh, this program, uh, are getting the result around three hours. Uh, I think you got good two, two hour, 50 minutes. And so he, by the way, he has not, it's not about making any, any record uh, that, yeah, we, you know, we have, we are done in two hour. So don't try to rush the exam just for the sake of, you know, making a record. If you have done, you've gone through the process, you have learned enough, this will become easy for you. The exam, the, you know, you, you know, 170 questions, will, you will fly through very easily and you get the result. 
Of course, you have to go through the whole learning process. Yeah. And yeah, good results. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And um, like the second point is uh, very few direct answer questions, and uh, ninety percent are indirect. In the sense, uh, direct answer, for example, um, name two EEFs. So that kind of questions are coming. So that maybe that's very straightforward answer. So. But most of the things are all not direct questions. So you have to think through it. Uh, so this the pattern. What to, in fact uh, other uh, aspirants whom I listen to you know, based on uh, your interview. So that's how it is going to be. Most of the times it is going to be indirect. And uh, second important thing is most of the questions are on tools and input output process. So this you need to really understand the input output process and the tools. And it's not uh, about the remembrance of remembrance of those things because they are not direct questions, right? So you need to really understand uh, where why this particular tool is used and why uh, this input uh, is used in this process, right? Then uh, communication management is mostly centered on stakeholders and their influences. Okay. Um, here I would like to give one important um, uh, advice here when you are reading through the SPM three. Uh, Look for the words like critical and essential. You know, very few small words. In the normal parallel scrolling, you will say, okay, critical and essential, you use it interchangeably. But when it comes to the examination, it is very particular. And uh, this is going to give you some kind of surprise because you will see what is the critical process uh, in a state, you know, uh, you know, managed state uh, strategic management change. So the critical process there is talking about uh, stakeholder management. Whereas essential is the gap analysis. So, unless until you are clear about that, you know, the kind of the question comes to you with uh, saying that what is the critical aspect or critical process that you will be doing or the first thing that you will be doing when doing your management uh, status management change. Uh, obviously, you will fail right, if you don't differentiate between these two things. Similarly, there are uh, other words uh, like uh, limiting factor and constraining factor. Uh, this is especially when you are talking about the capacity uh, capability analysis, capability and capacity management analysis, where the theory says the financial analysis is the constraining factor, whereas the remaining analysis like the HR or the or the asset uh, are going to be limiting factors. Okay. Um, so it, again, I got a question on this. So because I was able to concentrate on these things, so the answer I was able to choose the right one. So this is another advice when you are reading the SPM3, be specific or be more cognizant about these uh, words what we use. Going to the next uh, interesting topic is about efficient frontier and uh, Dharam has always uh, given uh, much more importance to this topic and uh, true to his expertise and true to his experience so there are more than two questions that have come, and here I'll try to recollect uh, some of the things how it came. Again, like uh, the theme is uh, you, you can see me repeating the same thing, the, it's not a direct question, so you need to really talk, think about what the answer is going to be. So, for example, uh, the question has come you use efficient efficiency frontier or efficient frontier when you are doing optimization of portfolio, right? In which scenarios, in, for which scenarios to do it. But the moment when you're reading the efficient point here, your mind gets connected to the performance management because that's where this efficient point here is being discussed in the SPM3. Whereas the question is coming about optimization, which is in the governance process, right? So now you need to really think, okay, why efficient point here is used, first of all, you know, what is the benefit of it? So efficient frontier normally you use it to, to identify which are the best uh, portfolios, uh, you know. When compared with the risk and the reward, and also it helps you in balancing your portfolio, right? So, which means you don't choose everything that is uh, skewed towards one particular thing. So, you will look into the entire uh, gamut of portfolio and then look into the how do I balance what kind of uh, uh, components that you should be using. So, that's how you will be able to answer the question because uh, it is not a strike for Yeah. I think this is a very important topic, as you mentioned. I do emphasize on this. You probably, I don't know, you got two, or generally that we talk about four to five questions on this chapter of this topic itself. 
Uh, it's a very interesting topic, and uh, people can do Google if they have never heard of this, or if you're preparing for uh, PFMP, they have to look into the performance management chapter. Uh, but it is very interesting chapter question. Uh, the thing is that, as you correctly said, it's not direct question, and you need to sometimes think outside the box. Uh, and you need to connect dots from here. Okay, this is the output of this. What is the output within this? And what is the output of this? Maybe you have to think multiple things in between. Then, then you come to the answer. And you say, hang on, this is a very straightforward answer because you already done the, everything in your mind. Correct. And yeah. um, the second question is uh, on efficient frontier is about uh, kind of which portfolios you, you, you will choose if it is a risk averse organization. Right? So, these are confusing, like you can say whether the portfolios you use above the curve or below the curve or along the upper portion or you know, along the lower portion of the curve, something like that. So you need to see how, what is the entire use of this efficient frontier and where exactly it used and then you will be able to address this question. So understanding is the key, that's what I would like to highlight here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then uh, thankfully there are no confusing answers. Like for example, uh, you know, everything looks same, but only one word will be different. You know, question A and B, C answers. That kind of things are not there. So hey, once you know, let's you clarify. Know, let me let me yeah. talk about that confused. No confusing answer. Okay. Confusion happen when you have not studied in detail. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you know, people say their exam was very confusing. They were, there are there two or three are very similar answer. Yes, but if you are clear, your mind is clear. You know what's, what words you're thinking. Then you you probably don't have to think anything. You uh you know exactly what you're looking for. You have the answer. Confusion right. happens when you have a lack of clarity. Right, okay. <laughs> right. So you know um normally I'm referring to answers which will be just you know one small word will be different there. You know everything will be same. Yeah. And I so <laughs> that kind of things are not there. So again, like uh, you mentioned, in fact, I also mentioned saying once you know the answer, the remaining will seem not related. So, yeah. like what you said is also the same thing. Then um, there are some two questions on balance scorecard, which I was not prepared for because it's not there in SPM3. But of course, it comes to uh, your experience of using balance scorecards. And there are no, some actually balance scorecard is very important from portfolio point of view, and it starts from the organization level where they are you know looking for service level agreement so with this talks about the growth and where exactly the organization is going and based on that slas and kpis and these kpis are kpi are the key performance indicator these kpis are given to the portfolio managers and they need to stay aligned with the kpis so that the project program they're selecting and the operation work they have to align themselves with the balance of that so it is mentioned a few places but we probably didn't you know, spend too much yeah. time on this very interesting topic and you one should spend or do some google uh you know if you have if you're looking for some example i can definitely show you yeah right and um there are some four math related questions mostly on the spa and cpa so the question was same but uh, so the, the scenario was same the questions were different things right? and then um there are some things so it, it's all focused on process it became easier sometimes to spot the answer in the sense uh, which which one do you first you, you do first analysis or document so usually you do the document first and then go for the analysis right so once you are clear about the process answering those questions become easy because uh, you know the kind of questions are mostly on process related things somebody raised a point saying that there is a risk and uh, you know, how do you address that or you go and address the risk immediately or Put it in the risk register and do the analysis and then go to the governance board, you know, something like that. So, what process that you're going to follow that matters most in answering these kind of questions? Yes. Yeah. So, let me remind uh, people look, this is your exam and your experience. And uh, you may have received a lot of uh, tools, techniques, question, uh, one liner question, four five line question, but some, you know, other people might have different experience. So, you know, I'm, I'm telling the, the audience here. So yes, you look at this. Yes, you can get a you know, some kind of these kind of questions, but don't just rely on this. Just be open for any surprises as well. So be prepared Absolutely. for surprises. Absolutely, yes. 
these are just a kind of pointers, you know, to give a feel at what kind of things people are coming. Yeah. Uh, like you said, uh, it need not be saying could be entirely different. Also. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have people who they have because they're on the exam. The questions were lengthier than what what I was expecting, and it took more time to me. Uh, but good that I was prepared using Genius Question and I was all prepared. So, you know, even though it was a little harder, but uh, he was still able to complete the exam in three hours and thirty minutes. And again, harder so, and harder and easier is is a is subjective term. Yeah, that's right. So um, uh, just uh, some more details like uh, on strategy, mostly about to manage strategy change. That kind of questions, the news you has come or methods happened or components dropped into budget. You know, so mostly on the uh, management st manage strategy uh, change in the process, and uh, some are straightforward uh, name. Process in the government's knowledge area, something like that. Okay. So, yeah, going to further, um, like I said, um, these are again like uh, like Dharam keeps uh, pointing the same thing that uh, this is my experience, don't just rely on me. It is just going to be, it's just to I'm sharing my experience, you know. Your, your view probably will be getting entirely different. So. And some interesting things which are come from. Directly from Dharam's question, the bank is uh, on a bottleneck resources or uh, request for two projects. How do you, what kind of analysis that you do? It is a straight lift, <laughs> probably. This is kind of, uh, of course, a scenario entirely different. I'm just you know, giving a uh, brief about the question. The yeah, scenario was different. Or, or, or I, I felt like that. Okay. So, right. So, coming to my closing thoughts. So, then would like to add anything on exam preparation or exam analysis. So, oh, no, that's good. Uh, yeah, it was your uh, own exam, so I can cannot talk much about that. Yeah. Right. So, on the closing thoughts, uh, I again emphasis on no substitution for hard work, and uh, you have to put your all your efforts, dedicate your time to the you know examination, to your preparation, stick to your study plan, and um, follow the schedule and. Uh, Analyze your progress area wise improvements. You have the tests that are come, which are there, you go for those tests and you analyze. Like I was talking, uh, I when I did my analysis, I kind of shared with Dharam also saying that uh, I was um, failing in um, strategic uh, you know, chapter, strategic uh, management chapter, whereas I'm able to get good scores in risk. Kind of, you know, that analysis I told him, and uh, he kind of gave some pointers how to improvise on those, you know, areas that I need a lot of improvement. So that really helped me. So you keep constant uh, discussion, engage with uh, your mentor. Like Dharam was really helpful in uh, you know, addressing those things. And uh, utilize all available resources. We go to YouTube, blogs, you know, Kindle or some books, wherever that you have, you know. Knowledge where it is there. You know, uh, join those study groups and um, they, where you can share your uh, experiences, and people are really uh, helpful in uh, addressing those concerns of you. And uh, yeah, at the end, uh, enjoy your certification of all the profession. Yes. Very good summary, uh, Krishna. Uh, you, you spend really good time to put your thoughts together, and uh, I'm sure people watching this will be very thankful to you. And I'm sure you know. Whenever you anybody watching, please, man, you know, put a comment or uh, send a quick message to Krishna to me. Hey, I watched your video; it was very good or not. You know, but if not, you didn't like it, please let us know. Uh, yeah. You know, it, these things take a lot of time and effort to put together. So, appreciating your kind word uh, will always, you know, put other person to be more motivation, motivation, and motivated to give back. So, please do that. And uh, yes, Krishna, it was your hard work. You put your 70 days together and you continuously work on it. You have your, your structure, you build the structure and you flashcard and your thoughts together and you learn and you made the exam look so easy. You completed the entire exam in two hours, 15 minutes. So it's a, it's a commendable achievement and uh, getting your above target result in a short period of time, you know, and uh, with a little doubt when you started versus completing Within two months, uh, I, I feel proud of your, your your achievement. You did really, really well. And uh, thanks for making me feel proud because my student 
success you have is that so, so, you know i take the entire credit some credit as well and yes. so so you know thank you for making me feel proud and keeping my 100% result and as of now i have 67 pfmps and all 100% with about target so far even our about target and 100% result so it is also you know you know guru and shishya on the teacher and the student relationship it makes uh, the learning even better the respect to your teacher listening to what other person is saying because the person talking to you is coming with with more experience working with so many people and he or she has seen you know do's and don'ts and lesson learned and when he teaches you uh, he, he the information flows to you of course you accept with the I mean, it's not that what I'm saying would be entirely true, but you need, you need to analyze. Hey, that I'm saying, yeah, makes sense to me. I'm not making really sense to me. Whatever works for you. So um, right. with this, you know, I, I like right. to hold it uh, once again. Congratulate you for your your extraordinary success. And uh, more important is you putting to, together your thoughts together and celebrating the success by giving back to the community. And uh, I like to see more and more people do that uh, with uh, achieving your result and giving back. You know, I'm happy to spend my time and uh, you know get to the video. And it's all about your commitment, your way, passion to give back. So thank you, Krishna. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Sir. I like thank this you. quote: "The journey of thousand miles begins with one single step, and uh, the single step has to take has to be taken by you, and with the vision." of finishing my journey in this particular time. And every step, one step at a time, one step at a time, you should realize you will be there. Thank you, sir. thank you. Good luck to all of you, all the people who are watching this video and spread this video, you know, share with the video. I know it's a lengthy video. Uh, sometimes say no, no, not a time, but when you have good content, uh, people like to watch. So please share share with your family. You know, family is preparing as well. Why not? Your kids when they grow. You know, who knows this video you watching in 41, 2041 or 2051. I like to see that. You know, I, by the time you know, we may not be there, the video will be there. Anyway, uh, good to have you, Krishna, and have you as my student and uh, doing this journey in a, in a very beautifully and a very smoothly within two months time. I'm very proud proud of your achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.